Well, since Tuesday, when Fort Worth police seized several decaying bodies from a vacant mortuary, we've heard the family running the business tell us that they have done nothing wrong. Police see it differently, arresting Rachel Johnson, the wife of one of the twin brothers who ran the funeral home with her before the landlord starting evict started evicting them all. Fox Force Brandon Todd is at the Fort Worth Police Department with the abuse of corpse arrest. Brandon. Right, Steve, and there were seven arrest warrants drawn up for Rachel Johnson and her husband, Dondre. He helped run the mortuary, but as you mentioned, she's in jail. Police are still looking for him. Only Fox 4 was there as Rachel Johnson pulled up in her Range Rover, was swarmed with law enforcement at her South Arlington home. Police spent little time at the home, then took her away. The owner of Johnson Family Mortuary was in cuffs the next time we saw her at the Fort Worth Police Department. Apparently, she wasn't expecting a lot of attention, dressed in a throwback Wonder Woman t-shirt, sweats, and flip-flops. She faces seven charges of abuse of corpse for seven bodies found inside the Johnson family mortuary Tuesday that were in various stages of decay. Oh, none of those bodies could be identified. None of the seven bodies could be identified visually. Johnson only yesterday professed her innocence to alleged victims, at times even crying. And I wouldn't want this for my loved ones. She's sad and crying because she got caught. She's not sad and crying because she feels bad for us. Relatives of Victoria Vasquez, one of the bodies that was supposed to be cremated but never was, couldn't be happier to see an arrest in the case. And I just still can't believe it. I just knew justice would come through. When she said the, the truth would come out, the truth would come out. It is, and it's coming out, and I couldn't be more happier with the results. The eighth body found inside, Chui Mwangilwa, was not part of the charges. Although a friend of the 42-year-old from Zambia told us her wishes for her body to be shipped back to Africa were not honored. I just hope the body goes home because that's what she asked for. She asked the body to go back home to Zambia, and that's what the Zambian community in the USA did. Dondre Johnson, Rachel's husband, ran the funeral home with his twin brother, Derek. Fort Worth police say there are seven counts of the same charge for Dondre Johnson, who Friday morning bonded out of jail from an unrelated contempt of court charge. Not only did the twin brothers not have a license to operate the mortuary, they were fined by the state when they ran D&D &D Johnson Funeral Home and were eventually shut down in 2009. According to documents obtained by Fox 4 regarding the investigation by the Texas Funeral Services Commission into one complaint, they are presuming to be more than they are to the general public. Their illusions of grandeur and inflated egos are blindsiding them from following the letter of the law. What we have here is an issue of unlicensed representatives portraying themselves as funeral directors and doing so in an untrained and unprofessional manner. And this is just the beginning. My closure will not be until we're sitting in front of them at sentence. Now, there were two stillborn infants found in that mortuary. Right now, the medical examiner is resorting to DNA to identify them. Steve? All right, Brandon. So I'm not sure this... Uh... I'm not sure of this abuse of corpse charge and how serious that is as it relates to the other charges that they may face because there's also allegations not charged yet about uh, fraud and, and money that disappeared, right? So there, there's some more potentially serious charges out there coming. Right, there are a lot of layers to this investigation. Right now, the abuse of corpse charge is a misdemeanor. So even if they were sentenced to the maximum, it's likely they might not spend a lot of time in jail. However, as you said, there's a lot to look at in this case. And will investigators find uh, fraud? Will they find a felony in all of this? There's a difference between uh, running a bad business and then intentionally deceiving people, which uh, in this, this case is alleged on both of those. So if they find fraud will, and, and they find a felony, will this bump that up? Could they face stiffer charges in this? I guess that remains to be seen, Steve, but certainly the victim's families in all of this are hoping that's the case. Yeah. All right, Brandon Todd, live in Fort Worth tonight. Thank you.